What is JSON and why you should care? I know what you're thinking, Eddie, we all know this stuff. Are you sure? I get asked this question so many times in private DMs. I don't know why people don't ask publicly. So once and for all, let's understand JSON together. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments below and I can include it in a future video. And of course, I'll give you credit. As you can see to your right, I have a JSON file with multiple objects, different field types, integers, strings, collections, also known as arrays and objects. And we're gonna talk how you can create this, nest them, manipulate them, and why it's important not to mix types. An age, for example, should be a number and should not be wrapped in double quotes to make it a string. And then we can manipulate this JSON data that we can receive from a REST API and do all sorts of awesome things. I'm gonna give you an example in JavaScript, but you can use any language that you want. In this case, I've grouped together how many people come from different locations. And you can see behind me, we've got two people in London and one person in Porto. And we're all using REST APIs all the time to communicate from the front end to the back end, from a back end to another back end, to another back end, to another microservices. You've heard it and seen it all before. It, JSON is so important. And it doesn't matter what library or framework you're using in the front end, be it Angular, React, Vue, Nux. It doesn't matter or what other new ones come out since I've posted this video. It actually doesn't matter what server-side language you're using on the back end. They all use JSON to communicate over RESTful API. So we all need to understand JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. I also know what you're thinking, but why JSON? Well, it's easy for us to understand and it's easy for the machines to understand. So everybody's happy. JSON can also be used to store data as well as communicate data. If you have some config or data that does not change that often and it's application wide, then JSON is a good format to use and you can keep it in your repo for easy access. As long as there's no sensitive data in there like passwords or tokens. And no, a private repo does not fix this issue. Let me know in the comments if you would like a video on that. That's something we could talk about. Before we get into the tutorial, let me tell you a bit about myself and my channel. I'm a self-taught full stack DevOps developer with over 15 years experience. I'm a GitHub star and I'm a GitHub star of the year. That's one out of 55 million people on GitHub. I am super, super ecstatic about that and I still don't know how I managed to win that. My goal is to help you accelerate your skills and grow your network so that you can get the job and client and money that you deserve. If that sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe below and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. Right, back to JSON types. So here we've got a JSON file with the extension JSON, no surprise there. The first thing you need to do is use the curly braces to create an object and an object will have a field and a value. So in this case, let's create a field called name. And we need to wrap the value in double quotes as well because it's a string. The next field we'll have is age, but the value of age will not be wrapped in double quotes because it's not a string. I think I'm uh, 39. And if it's the last field in the object, we don't need a comma at the end. But if we're going to add one more, we need to add a comma. This is a string again, so I'm going to say I'm in London. Let's run the code and see what we've got. Oh, damn it, I meant to delete this. To read out the data from the JSON file, we can use const data and we can use the require and node will bring that in as a JavaScript object. So let's just output the data to the console. As you can see, you get the object that we have in our JSON file outputted into the console. And we can check that we're reading the data correctly and it is actually an object by trying to bring out a specific property out of the object. So if we said a name and then I run that again, we should only get the name and we do. So we know it's treated as a JSON object because we can navigate through the object. So next, let's add another person in. So what we need to do is actually create an array. So we spoke about strings and we spoke about numbers, but we've also got arrays. So if we want multiple objects, we can wrap it in an array. So let's create a new object at the top. And the first field is going to be users. The type of this field is going to have a square bracket, which means it's an array. So it's a, a collection of multiple items. In this case, it's going to be a collection of multiple objects. Remember to close every bracket that you open. So now we've got users and it only has one user. But if we run the code again, you can see it's now got users then the collection and then my user object. So let's add a second user to this. So you guessed it, we would duplicate this object and it would be separated by a comma. And let's change the name, let's put Sarah 38 and let's just put a different location, can't spell Porto, there we go. And if I run that one last time, 
you can see now we've got users and we've got two users. So the great thing about this is we can actually also bring out a particular item out of the collection quite easily. And as part of the data manipulation, we can actually bring out the first or second user. So we could do something like this. We could say, go into the user's collection and pull out the first one. So now if I run that, we can see it's pulled out me. And if I change it to the second one, and you'll notice that I'm starting at zero because arrays start at zero. So the first one will be zero, and the second one won't be number two, will be number one. If I run that, it brings out Sarah. What else can we do? I've got a few ideas. Let me just add a third person. If we add my awesome video editor, Alona, who I wanna say is 28 and We'll say he's in Porto as well. I know you're not in Porto, but uh, for this example, you're going to be in Porto so I can count the locations that people are in. And you guessed it, if I put number two, it will bring out the third person, which will be a loner. What else can we do? We could also bring out an item. So if we brought out from the third item in the object, we could bring out name. So if I run this again, it just brings out the name. But what happens if we wanted to bring out everybody's name? Well, what we could do, we could actually loop over this and you can say which are a variable, but it's actually an easier way with ES6. We could do a map and we say the map, the item that we want to pull out is a user. And then what we want to do is actually map out from user we want to map out the name. So now if I save this, what will happen is the map will run through every user in the array and it will only bring out the name for that. So now if we run that and sit, you'll see it brings out a collection or an array for the name from each object. That's pretty cool, right? Especially when you're getting all this data from an API and you want to select per certain part, we're going to do some awesome manipulations as well. Another thing we can do here actually before we move on, we could actually do a filter and let's say we want to filter where the age is greater than 30. So if I refresh that, how many results are you expecting? We only get two. Alona is under 30, so it gets omitted from the filter. It's really easy and convenient to manipulate the JSON data. Let's do something a bit more challenging, but only slightly, bear with me. Let's count how many people are in each location. So what we'll do is let's remove this and we will use something called a reduce. And what a reduce does, it will go through and collect the data and you can add it up, you can sum it, you can put it into buckets. There's so many awesome things you can do. But in this case, we're gonna put it into buckets, into location buckets. So the first property in the function of the reduce is gonna be the total. So this is gonna be our locations and each in this object, we're gonna have the buckets for each location. And then the next parameter is the current object and then we'll do our ES6 function and we'll do a function here oh one too many brackets and we'll say if in the location the current location already exists we want to increment it because we can't increment it if it doesn't exist yet so if it does exist let's increment it but if it doesn't exist yet if it's the first time we're discovering this location in the loop then let's just make it equal to one and then we need to return the whole amount of all the buckets for the next round trip. And then actually the second parameter we need in the function is an object, an empty object, because we're gonna add the location to the object as it goes around. So if we run this, you can see we've got one person in London and two in Porto. And that's correct. We've got Eddie in London, Sarah in Porto, and Alona in Porto. So that's done that for us. It's gone through and added it up. You don't have to write any kind of crazy long code that I've seen people do and push things onto arrays and all the rest. A reduce makes our life a lot simpler. The next thing I want to show you is how we can nest things even further. Here we've got a JSON object and it's got a user's collection. Then in the collection, we've got the user objects. But under each user, we could also have another object. So if we call this field, say, experience, we could make another object. You can keep nesting these as far as you want. And the experience could be, it could be done on year. It could be done on company. If I say GitHub's in my experience, then we could say the date, the start date that I worked there. And the start date would be a string. So say 2020, and then we could put an end date of 2021 and there's no comma at the end. So we can keep nesting these further and further and in our code, we can then pull out the parts that we want. We could manipulate them and have so much fun. Let me know in the comments below what data you're going to store in your JSON and how you're going to manipulate it. Have you used any awesome ES6 or ES7 functions to do any awesome manipulations? Let me know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below. As you can see, 
There isn't a lot to learning JSON, but we need to have it as a strong foundation, no matter what type of developer we are.